Hello everyone and welcome to this week's plugin tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to add support for your plugin to work on M1 or ARM based chips. This is a pretty simple upgrade, but I'm going to be showing you how exactly you can do it. Of course, it will require that you have a Mac and a newer OS and X code. So today I'm going to be actually going through the Adobe SDK guide that goes through how to add Apple Silicon support and uh, we're just going to be going step by step through everything that's required. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description you can check out the code for this. Uh, I'll attach a link to this particular page of the SDK guide. You can also follow us on GitHub down below for coding updates and Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with a lot of our members, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us financially and get cool perks, down in the description you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that is required to make this work for an M1 Mac is that we have to be using Xcode 12.2 or above. Now, to do that you'll need to go to the App Store and find Xcode. Now, I had a previous OS installed on my computer, I believe it was Catalina, and in order to get Xcode 12 and above, you need to upgrade to Big Sur, basically. So make sure you have the newest OS on your MacBook. You will need Big Sur in order to compile for M1 Macs because they run on such a new architecture, and that's where the uh, compatible code is in the right Xcode version. So make sure you have Xcode 12.2 or above, and now we need to go ahead and find a project to open up. I'll go ahead and just load up, say, Convolutrix, which is a convolvement plugin. And using this, we're going to basically set it up to work on Apple Silicon. So now that we've gone ahead and chosen a project, we're going to make work on the new architecture. There's kind of two different things we need to do. The first is we need to set up our build process to build specifically for any Mac or Apple Silicon or any Intel processor as well. And we also need to adjust inside of our R file. Basically, this is going to tell the plugin, depending on what architecture it's using, whether it's Windows 64-bit, Windows 32-bit, uh, Mac OS based on Intel or Mac Silicon, it's gonna tell it where it needs to start the plugin. So as you can see here, instead of uh, compiling on my Mac, you can choose any Mac, which gives you support for Apple Silicon, as well as Intel, which is basically whatever uh, the older Macs use. So in order to change this, we have up here Convolutrix. Uh, we'll change my Mac and we'll choose it to work for any Mac. So just doing that itself will basically make it so all the code will then be compatible. Now we just need to tell uh, inside of our code where to start the plugin processing. Base. So we'll find our Convolutrix uh, R file. This will be, in this case, our PIPL file. In most cases, it has that PIPL at the end. And if we scroll down here, you can see we have a bunch of if defs. We have an if def checking if the current OS is Windows, and inside of that you can check if it's an Intel 64-bit processor, and that tells it to run the effect main. If we find that it's a Mac, we're going to put in an entry point for a Mac Intel 64. Now if we look at this, we need to add some code here inside of our Mac definition that says code Mac ARM64 because M1 processors use the ARM architecture and we're going to define the effect main or entry point function. And just for reference, effect main here is indeed in our code. If we go to our main C++ file and search for an effect main, this is where everything gets tested out. This is where our about gets set up, our global setup, our parameter setup or our interface our render, and all of the different calls that get done are all done in here. So we're simply telling it, hey, if this is um, an M1 or an ARM architecture, please use this code. So we can go ahead and copy and paste this here. We already have the Mac Intel 64 code. We'll go ahead and put in right above it, code Mac ARM 64, and we want to tell it effect main. If you're using like an AEGP or a different kind of plugin or have a different uh, entry point, just go ahead and put in whatever the name of that entry point is. And in the guide, it also says if for some reason you need different entry points on X64 and ARM, just provide a different entry point. Basically, if you needed to have a different set, set of sub instructions to run on older Macs and a newer set of instructions on newer Macs, uh, you could separate out 
these uh, this if def to uh, do it separately for Mac ARM and Mac Intel. And it'd probably be easiest to do like ARM effect main Intel, something like that. And then you could have them defined separately in your C++ file. Now, lastly, it says to compile the binary by building for the any Mac target or by using product archive. Now, the ways we do this then is by simply hitting the plus button and we'll see if we get a successful build. And we appear to have an error. Let's see if it builds uh, just for my Mac. And if there's a difference, then we can try and figure that out. Right here it says, can't find a match for code Mac ARM64 in the switch statement. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is navigate to where this stuff is being saved and see if maybe I just do a restart or delete it all and bring it back up, it will work. So I'll go to a folder, paste this guy. Let's just delete this folder here. This is the build folder. And now let's try and build it. Perhaps because I changed the R file, it wasn't wanting to work. But now if we force it to rebuild it from scratch, you know what I'm going to try is giving this a separate if def. So I'm going to say if def, or can we say if defined AE OS Mac, I believe is the format it uses. Admin end if, just double checking, this use if defined AOS Mac. So maybe we need a separate one for each of them. And then we'll bring in the arm into this section. I'll go ahead and save it and see if we can compile just the regular my Mac build. And we still get an error. Okay, I think I have an idea of what the problem is. I am using Convolutrix from an After Effects SDK folder that's older than when the M1 Max came out. So what I'm going to do is load up the project in a newer, in the newest SDK. So it might work if I add this with the newest SDK. So I have examples, which is an older SDK, and then examples 2021 is using the newest version. So I'll go back into effect, convolutrix, and I'll open up the Xcode project. And now we should be good to go in. You can see it actually is already defined in here for us. So possibly in this SDK, they've already added this feature into all the plugins, which is nice. You can see underneath Mac Intel 64, under Mac OS, we have code Mac ARM 64. Now, once again, let's go to any Mac and we will click the play button to compile it. And as you can see, we get a successful build. So the secret is not only to add this code Mac ARM support into your R file, it's also to make sure you're using the newest version of the SDK files. That way it has the either built-in support that comes with the example projects, or it will have the proper code to uh, check for that. Because when I was using the older SDK code, it didn't even recognize code Mac ARM64. That was a completely unprogrammed thing inside of it. And the other way you can also do this, instead of just hitting uh, run, which creates the file, we can also go to product and archive. Uh, this may actually be what you want to do if you're looking to put this into an installer package and uh, be able to sign, notarize, and staple it uh, with Apple. So as you can see, archive succeeded. Now it's going to bring up the R archives. We have our convolutrix we just archived. We'll hit distribute content, build products, and then you can select where you want to save this. I'll just save my in my documents. And now if I go into my documents, convolutrix, products, users, and I can go in and find my convolutrix.plugin, which has been compiled. And this is also, again, what you want to do most likely when you need to sign and notarize your files uh, in order to work on other computers. But that's the main thing of it. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's how to upgrade your plugin to work on Apple Silicon or M1 Max. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, again, you can check out the link to follow along and do this yourself. 
Don't forget, aside from these instructions, what this doesn't mention is that you need to have the newest version of the SDK. You don't want to use any old folders or old SDK folders as those won't be compatible. Also make sure you follow us in the description to get coding updates on GitHub and Instagram as well to get live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link for that in the description. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.